Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and I finally got my new MacBook Pro with Touch Bar, and this is a pretty well-loaded, specced out one. So before I go ahead and open this, let's take a look at what I actually picked up. What I ordered was the silver 15-inch MacBook Pro, and what you can see here is it's 2.7 gigahertz quad core, but I wanted that to be a little bit faster, so I bumped it up to 2.9 gigahertz. And then we needed a little bit more storage. And yes, Apple is charging ridiculous amounts of money for storage. And you can't upgrade it in the future. It's soldered to the board. And finally, I needed to go with the faster graphics because I do all of these video edits. And so that puts the price at $3,499 before tax. You'll see this is a pretty fast one, so let me show you the specs on the back here. You'll see it is the 2.9 gigahertz version, quad core, and this should be pretty fast. It's got the bumped graphics card and everything, so let's take a look at it. I will open it up here. It comes very slow here. There we go. And you'll see this is the silver one. And no more light up logo, which is unfortunate, but let's set this aside for just a moment. And inside, we've got our normal paperwork here. MacBook Pro, some white stickers, Apple stickers. Unfortunately, no space gray or no silver ones or anything like that, like you get with the MacBook. And then we have our USB-C cable. Just USB-C to USB-C. And then our wall brick. And it's just USB-C and it flips down like this. And it does not come with the extension cable. Despite what some people say, it's not underneath here. So you don't get the extension cable with it, which is pretty ridiculous for a $3,500 laptop where my previous one actually came with it. So we've got the power brick. USB-C. Let's set this aside. And of course, with this one, because we only have USB-C ports, I had to pick up a bunch of adapters. So this is USB-C to gigabit ethernet, USB-C to USB-B or A rather, and USB-C or Thunderbolt 3, which is the same thing to Thunderbolt 2. Hopefully this will allow me to drive my monitor, which runs off mini display port, I'm not sure. And then USB-C to lightning, so of course I can plug my iPhone into it if I ever need to do that. It's kind of getting a little ridiculous, but we'll see how I like it over the next couple weeks here. So this is the laptop itself. Let's go ahead and open it up here. And we have a piece of paper, and immediately it turns on by itself. One thing I really like about this is this keyboard. I know a lot of people hate it. I loved the MacBook keyboard. This is a little bit more clicky from what people are saying, and it definitely has a more tactile feedback back. So I think it's pretty nice. This trackpad is huge, and I guess it has palm rejection and all sorts of things built in. I'll just continue through this, and there's the touch bar. You can see it here. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can get a better look at what it looks like. So here's the touch bar. If I hit the volume, we get volume up, down, and this is keyboard brightness up and down, and escape. It's just a flat sheet of glass, and then on the right we have touch ID. Now the computer's been on for a minute, it's fully set up, and as you can see, once I moved the cursor, it turned this touch ID bar on, or what used to be the function key bar. But you leave it alone for a while, it goes off. If I hit this button, it will expand. I can hit the X, it goes away. And then if I hit volume, we get a slider. The same thing happens with the brightness. Turn it down or up with the slider, and then it goes away. We just have our Touch ID over here, Siri. And then if I open something different, so if I open Safari, it will change. And then I can search right here, 
I can add a tab and it just lets me change what I want based on what I'm using. So depending on what app I open, if I open the app store, let's see what it does. It doesn't do anything special for the app store. If I go into system preferences, it doesn't change really other than show all. So it adapts to what you're doing and it should be pretty interesting over time. Now the design, I like the keyboard, I like the trackpad, and we'll have to hear the speakers over time. It's super thin, we've lost the lit background of the Apple logo, which is kind of sad, that was kind of iconic. We do still have a headphone jack or microphone in out, line in out, and we've got two USB-C ports. We also get two on the other side as well, and that's pretty much it. It's just a little bit thinner. The bottom is basically the same thing. We just have our screws and feet, and then the hinge is a little bit different. So that's it. I'll be using it for a while. This will be my main editing computer. I normally use a Mac Pro, and I'm not a big fan of the Mac Pro. It's It's been reliable, but it's not terribly fast. My previous MacBook Pro was a little bit quicker. So I'll be doing comparisons and all sorts of things, and I don't want to give you a review until I've actually used it. So I want to use it for a week or two, use it full-time for editing, and see what it's like, if it's something that I would recommend or keep or if you just keep your old one. So let me know what you want to see in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.